Hi, James Whiffen here for AE Tuts, and today we're talking about pre-multiplication and alpha compositing. Whether we're anti-aliasing the edges of geometry to create the appearance of a smooth edge, or using depth of field or motion blur, in computer graphics we often have a need to display transparent pixels. If, for example, I had a red pixel that was 50% transparent, would I then see through that transparent pixel and see the window outside my office? Unfortunately not. Computer monitors can't display transparent pixels. They have to be rendered atop a background. Let's take a look at how a 3D application, such as Maya, creates transparency in its renders. Maya will render the red, green, and blue channels first. If you also have the option checked, Maya will render an alpha channel. Just like the red, green, and blue channels, the alpha channel is a grayscale image. It has values that range from 0 to 1. 0 represents 100% transparency, and 1 represents 100% opacity. If you have the pre-multiply option checked, once Maya has rendered the R, G, B, and A channels, it will simply multiply the red, green, and blue channels by the alpha channel. Any RGB values that are multiplied by 1 will remain unchanged, but in places where the alpha channel has a value of less than 1, the RGB values will be multiplied by that and become transparent to varying degrees. In areas where the alpha value is 0, the RGB values will be multiplied by that and won't be visible in the pre-multiplied image. So whenever you've got the pre-multiply option checked, Maya will do this multiplication before you get to see the rendered image. It multiplies beforehand, hence pre-multiplication. Also note that Maya and many other 3D applications, default background color is set to black. So when we pre-multiply in Maya with the default background color of black, Maya will render the red, green and blue channels, multiply that by the alpha channel, and mix those transparent channels with the background color, which is black. In After Effects terms, this image would be pre-multiplied, matted with color, black. If the background color inside of Maya had been set to red, the image would be pre-multiplied, matted with color, red. And as long as both images are interpreted correctly inside the compositing application, they will look identical. Here we have the red, green and blue channels rendered out of Maya. It's a simple uh, sphere that we have here and I've applied a ramp shader to it. And um, I've also applied a bokeh lens shader to the Maya camera. So this ball is out of focus, but you wouldn't really know uh, just by looking at the red, green and blue channels. Um, Maya has extended the colors uh, all the way to the edge of where the blur would be. So I'll just put the RGB into our composition here. And once Maya's rendered that, it will render out an alpha channel. And this is what our alpha channel looks like. The white areas represent 100% uh, opaque, and the black areas 100% transparent. By default, some applications uh, may have the alpha channels inverted, but this is how Maya and most applications do it. So we'll put that in our composition and just turn it off. And I'll also add a background layer just so we can see this ball uh, atop a background, so a dark blue color will do nicely. So once Maya has rendered all four channels, R, G, B, and A, it will multiply the uh, red, green, and blue channels by the alpha channel if you have pre-multiply checked. And pre-multiply is uh, turned on by default, so Maya will always pre-multiply images unless you have uh, that option turned off. So we can emulate that with uh, compound arithmetic and apply that to the RGB layer. We'll want to set the operation to multiply and we want to multiply the RGB by the alpha. And we want it to affect all four channels. And there we have our rendered image, pre-multiplied rendered image. I've just rendered that image out of Maya, uh, and here it is, it's called result.tiff. And uh, if we choose from RGB from the channels RGB straight, we can actually see the, uh, the straight unpre-multiplied uh, image that Maya rendered, and uh, it multiplied that by the alpha channel and that's the image that we see we see the pre-multiplied uh, image in this case it's been pre-multiplied with black so if we turn off the uh, the image that we manually pre-multiplied we can put the already pre-multiplied image here and we can see that they are exactly the same the most important thing with alpha compositing is just to make sure that the compositing application is interpreting the footage correctly so when we import uh, a bit of footage, we get these options here, the alpha options. Now, if you don't know what, uh, what settings your footage is, uh, you can just tell After Effects to guess, and in most cases, it'll get it correct. 
but not 100% of the time. Fortunately, most times if you get these settings wrong, uh, you'll know right away because your image looks disgusting. So for example, we set this to straight, now I can see this very dark halo around the image. Though in some cases, getting these settings wrong won't be so obvious. So it's very important that we get it right. For straight images, make sure they're set to straight. And for pre-multiplied images, make sure that uh, you've A, set pre-multiplied, but B, chosen the right color. And in this case, um, it was rendered on a black background. So it will be pre-multiplied, matted with color, black. So let's say we've imported our pre-multiplied image and we want to do some color correction. Uh, as we know, the way After Effects is generating these transparent edges is by multiplying the color channels by our alpha channel. When we're viewing the pre-multiplied image, it's easy to forget that these values here, uh, which look quite dark, are actually extremely bright, but only appear dark because they're being multiplied by low alpha values. We can see from the info panel that these are very bright green pixels, but have a very low alpha value. Most of the time, that won't be a problem. However, when we apply a gamma correction, which only affects the relationship between white and black, it's being applied to these apparently dark pixels, which would yield a different result as opposed to if it were being applied to the straight pixels, or the pixels that haven't been multiplied by the alpha. And that can lead to incorrect results. The good news is that After Effects behind the scenes will handle this for you. So let's turn on our background and apply a levels effect to this image. And I'm going to change the gamma to 0.2. And uh, thanks to After Effects being very nice to us, this image is correct. However, if you're going into another compositing application, such as Shake or Nuke, you'll need to know the fix. All you need to do is unpremultiply the image, do your color correction, and then pre-multiply the image again. And here I have the same scene, but in Nuke, and if I apply a grade node to this, uh, to our ball that we rendered out of Maya, and I change the gamma to 0.2, just as we did in Maya, sorry, in After Effects, uh, we can see the very dark halo that we have around here. This gamma adjustment has been applied to these uh, pre-multiply pixels. So what we need to do is simply unmultiply, unpre-multiply the uh, our ball, and that's what our image looks like. Then we apply the grade node to that, which uh, looks quite ugly at the moment, but then we pre-multiply again. And now we have a nice looking image, just like it was inside of uh, After Effects. And if we select both the pre-multiplication node and the unpre-multiplication node and disable the two, we can see the difference they're making. So back in After Effects, and as I said, After Effects knows to apply this gamma adjustment to the straight unpre-multiplied image. But does that mean we don't need to know about pre-multiplication while working inside of After Effects? Absolutely not. If you don't understand pre-multiplication, you might not know what to do when you have matte issues. And you might simply end up choking the mats as a crude fix. And I'm certainly guilty of this. Let's take a look at an example. Here I have some live action footage of a lazy Susan. And what I'd like to do is composite some CG on top of it to make it look like a computer generated bowl. And I have three uh, render passes here to do that with. We have the beauty pass, which is just a lamb version shader. We have the ambient occlusion layer. And then we have a render layer to pick up the shadow from the hand when it comes across. So uh, let's begin compositing these. These are all pre-multiplied layers. So let's drag these into our scene. And I'd like the beauty at the bottom. And then I'd like the shadow and the ambient occlusion to uh, transfer their darker values to the beauty layer. So I'll choose the multiply option here. And this is what we get. Um, when I rendered this out, I didn't anticipate that the uh, the bowl, which is actually this dark, uh, didn't anticipate how dark it would get with the two layers atop it, so uh, it's now far too dark. So let's just add a levels adjustment here and uh, increase the gamma to two. Okay, that looks good. Now, one thing you may notice is that we have some fringing here, and uh, that's being caused by the fact that we have three layers that all have the exact same alpha being compounded on top of each other. So if I solo the beauty here and go to the alpha channel, 
we can see that we have this very nice alpha, but that's being ruined because we have these two layers uh, adding their alpha on top of it. So now we have uh, three times the alpha, and that's uh, what's causing that uh, harsh edge. And the more layers you have with the same alpha, the muddier the alpha will get. So what we need to do is, uh, I'll just get out of the alpha channel, composite all these three bowl uh, render passes in a pre-composition and then set that uh, very muddy alpha to a layer with clean alpha. So let's do that now. Let's control shift C these to a bowl. And uh, what I'd like to do is just grab any one of these layers here. They all have the same alpha and simply alpha mat the bowl to that layer. So now it has the correct alpha, but we're getting this fringe here. Why are we getting this ugly fringe? So if we didn't understand what pre-multiplication is and how it works, we might say, oh, well, we'll have to choke it. That's the only way we know how to fix it, so let's add the choker. This is the wrong way of doing things. Uh, certainly you will be able to choke the uh, this white fringe away, but you're muddying the alpha by doing that, and it's just the wrong way to do it. So let's get rid of that, and uh, let's take a screenshot of how it looks now. So if we go into the bowl and we turn this uh, transparency off, we'll see the fringe here. And the reason this is happening is if we just uh, take, say, the beauty and the shadow, we'll just turn the ambient occlusion off for a second, you can see the white fringe. Where is this white fringe appearing? It's appearing where the transparent pixels are in the beauty. We're multiplying the shadow which is actually quite bright in most areas except for where the shadow is and it's being multiplied over the transparent pixels and that's where the white edge is appearing and uh, it's just compounding with the fact that we have two layers set to multiply it's getting even brighter because they're being multiplied over transparent pixels with nothing underneath we have a problem and we could just add a black solid in to our background and that would uh, give these Emmy occlusion and shadow something to multiply on top of. But if we go to our composition here and uh, just preview the uh, previous image, we can see that we've fixed up the problem in these darker areas here. Uh, we can see the fringe is gone, but something you'll notice is that on the top here, we've actually created a darker halo. And uh, what we need to do is instead of just uh, using a black solid here to to let these multiply on top of, we need to use the background. So let's copy this live action footage and delete the black solid and paste that at the very bottom there. Now if we go back to this composition, we can preview uh, the previous image and clearly see the white fringe that we used to have and now we have uh, perfect alpha. I have this uh, scene here where we have this ball uh, flying towards the camera. We have motion blur turned on, and we also have uh, some image-based lighting here. This is a high dynamic range image of some clouds. In the render settings, I have pre-multiply turned on, which is by default. So when we render this out, let's import that image. Here it is. And uh, if we hit guess in the interpret footage, After Effects guesses that it should be straight. But we know that this is pre-multiplied Let's go ahead and pre-multiply this with black. If we double click on it, we can see that we have this terrible, terrible fringing up here. And if we go into straight, we'll see what the problem is. This image-based lighting has taken up the background. And uh, although there are certain parts of this image-based lighting which are black, we also have white and blue and all sorts of colors. So there's no way that we can pre-multiply this with one color. We'd have to pre-multiply this with the, with the background image. And since we're not going to be doing that, After Effects had correctly interpreted this as straight. We need to interpret an image such as that as straight. And when we do, we get a much cleaner result. However, the simplest way to fix a problem like this would be inside of Maya to select the image-based lighting and turn off primary visibility. That way, when we render it and import it into After Effects, when we hit Guess, we will be able to man it with a set color, with a single solid black color, and uh, that will look 
correct. And here we have the nice, perfect uh, result. However, if we had this image here, we rendered out our image sequence and um, you know, we realized that we hadn't turned off the image-based lighting, but it's too late now because we'd spent all that time rendering. Uh, remember that your interpreting settings may not uh, always be as you set them inside of Maya. So although it was set to pre-multiplied in Maya, we would have to go with straight here. Otherwise, we would just get this a disgusting result here. Another example of where we need to be wary of pre-multiplication is when we have a four-channel image and we just want to make an adjustment to the alpha channel. So here I have some green screen footage from Hollywood Camera Work, which you can download for free from their website. And I've pulled a very rough key. I haven't even gotten rid of the tracking markers. But just say we wanted to add a blur. Let's add a channel blur to this. And uh, I'm going to add a 10 pixel blur to all channels. And it, uh, we can do that and hit repeat edge pixels and there's no problem anywhere. It looks fine. But what happens if we want to make an adjustment to just the mat or the alpha channel? Let's remove the blur from these three channels and we can see that we have a terrible problem here. We've got this very ugly fringing. And the more we increase the blurriness, the more we can see the problem. So let's turn the blurriness back to zero and let's visit the uh, RGB straight and we can see where the problem's coming from. So what we need to do is uh, we need to change this back to RGB. We need to add the uh, channel combiner effect. So let's add the channel combiner effect up before the blur and let's go from straight to pre-multiplied. And now that we can blur the alpha without having to worry about these terrible, terrible artifacts. So as you can see, it's very important to understand pre-multiplication, what it is, when we need to pre-multiply for certain operations, and when we need to un-pre-multiply for certain operations, and how we can use our knowledge of pre-multiplication to fix many different matting issues. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.